My original plan for fall and winter sewing was to make the Philippa pants, the Lander pants, and the Dawn jeans, as I talked about in my intro video to this series. However, in between the making of that video and now, I got the news that my office would be working remotely for at least six months, possibly longer. So the thought of sitting around my house in three pairs of rigid denim pants is really not relevant to my life right now. So I decided to switch gears a little bit. I decided to make a few pairs of work appropriate, but still comfy pants, like pants that would make me feel like I'm sitting around in my PJs, but not actually look like I'm in PJs or workout gear. For the first pair, I decided to go with a hack of the Winslow culottes pattern from Helen's Closet. I know that I love this pattern already. I've made two pairs of these so far. One is as written, which has an invisible zip, I think up the back and side seam pockets. And the other one is is like a wrap pant hack that the designer had posted on her blog. So I did that one and it worked out great. I love those as well. For this pair, I decided to try doing an elastic back and also slash pocket. So both of those things were new to me. This was my first new sewing project since moving to the new house. So finding where I had stored all of my fabric was a bit of a trick. I was looking for something with a lot of drape, but also with enough body to be worn on my lower half. I pulled out a few candidates to see which would have enough yardage. I'm cutting out my regular size in this pattern. There are usually some pleats at the back if you're following the original instructions, so without the pleats there will still be enough fabric at the back to accommodate the elastic waist. For this hack, I only need the front and back leg pieces to start. I have a pretty short inseam, around 28 to 29 inches, and I had shortened this pattern before by folding up the hem at the bottom, so I'm going to follow the same cut line for this pair. All of these fabrics have nice drape, but I ended up going with the navy so these could be worn in the fall and winter more easily. This is a 100% tensile twill. You can tell it's a twill by the diagonal lines on the surface of the fabric. I always pre-wash my fabrics as soon as I get them and before they go into my stash, so all I have to do before starting my project is to press out any wrinkles. I find cutting to be the most important part of all of my sewing projects. If I don't start with accurate cutting, things tend to get wonky as I start sewing, so I always take a lot of time to try to get my pieces cut on grain. At all of the notch marks on the pattern pieces, I just cut a little snip into the fabric. There's no real reason that I can see to fully cut out a V-shaped notch, and this helps ensure that you're not cutting into the seam allowance further than you need to. With fabrics that look similar on the right and the wrong side, I always try to put a little piece of painter's tape on the wrong side of each piece. That way I don't have to spend any time later on screwing around, trying to figure out which side is which. Here I'm cutting out the pocket pieces for the slash pockets per the designer's instructions in her tutorial which is linked below. Slash pockets are actually quite easy to make as it turns out and I think her tutorial would give me the confidence to try this on other patterns. You do end up cutting off a bit of your front leg pieces to accommodate that slant pocket so I was really careful to make sure that I had the correct ones before making any cuts. Just move the line here. Since this is a woven fabric with no stretch, I'm using a universal needle. For threading my machine, I use a thread lift instead of the onboard spool holder. The thread lift allows your thread to relax a bit before going into the machine and can really help a lot with the tension. Before starting to sew, I always test a few stitch lengths on a doubled scrap of my fashion fabric. This way I can inspect the stitching, open up the seam to test how it will look from the right side, and also make sure that I'm using the right needle for this specific fabric. The first step is to create the front leg pleats. Stay stitching at the top inside what will eventually be the seam allowance, and then basting with a longer stitch length a bit further down so that everything will be held together nicely throughout construction. You do end up removing these basting stitches at the end. Now for the slash pockets. 
I screwed this up the first time by sewing a bit too far down the leg and I had to unpick some stitches. So if you do this hack, make sure you're only sewing the pocket on that diagonal line that you cut and no further. This is perfectly clear in the tutorial, but it's always easy to make mistakes if you're not paying attention. I could have helped myself by only pinning the pocket diagonal exactly where I needed to sew. By continuing to pin down the leg a bit, that made it less clear where I needed to stop sewing, but you live and you learn. I always keep a little bowl next to my sewing machine to collect any detritus like threads or tape. It makes cleanup really easy. After getting my serger threaded and testing my stitch on scrap fabric again, I was able to finish the pockets. Here is one assembled front. The next task is to attach each front leg to the corresponding back leg. I'm not going to get too worked up if the hem edges don't match up because I'll fix that later when I hem the pants. I never ever sew over pins. I have heard that that's a really good way to break your needle. So I always keep my magnetic pin cushion next to me at the machine so I can quickly pull out the pins as I sew. The next morning, got the doggo all settled, so it's time to keep sewing. For the waistband, the tutorial has you measure and calculate the exact length and width for your waistband piece. The waistband is cut as a rectangular pattern piece, which may not suit everyone, but these are worn so high on the waist that I don't have an issue with it not being curved to accommodate my bum. I'm using two inch wide soft waistband elastic for this, so I need to make sure that the depth of the waistband will accommodate that. It can be a bit of a challenge to find a straight edge long enough to cut against. I pulled one of my cutting mats over, but you can really use any straight edge you have handy for something like this. The hack tutorial doesn't tell you this, but I always cut notches at the center top and bottom of the waistband, so notches on the fold. This really helps to line everything up later on. I needed some interfacing for the front of the waistband, so after measuring the length, I pulled out my interfacing stash. The only woven interfacing I had was this black fusible interfacing. I have not had good experiences with fusible interfacing in the past. That shiny stuff is actually glue that will bond to the fashion fabric with heat. And the problem is, if the garment goes through the wash with warm water, that glue is going to get activated again and it can cause bubbling or other unsightly issues. So instead of using this stuff, I decided to search through my scraps for a tightly woven cotton. Quilting cotton or something similar is usually a good substitute for fusible. Here I'm testing out how the fabrics will feel once they're layered together in the waistband, because even a small difference in thickness can make a really significant difference in feel once everything is layered and assembled. I decided to go with this black cotton linen blend. To make my life a bit easier, I'm using this quilter's fabric adhesive to stick my interfacing and fashion fabric layers together. This stuff will hold it together for long enough for me to sew, but it will wash out in the first laundering. I always spray in my shower so it's a bit easier to clean up. It took a little while to line up the interfacing piece with the center front of the waistband, and I was really grateful for those center front notches I cut earlier on both the waistband and the interfacing. The adhesive is light enough that it's easy to adjust multiple times if needed, which I definitely did. Here I'm sewing together the edges of the waistband to form a circle, pressing the seam open, and then folding the waistband wrong sides together. When attaching the waistband to the pant legs, the pattern instructs you where to leave openings for your elastic. I marked those with double pins so I'd know to stop sewing once I got to that point. I used a ton of pins on the front since there's a lot going on there between the pleats and the slash pockets. It's really easy for fabric or seams to get pushed the wrong way when they go under the sewing machine, so lots of pins can be a good insurance policy. This also gave me a good opportunity to inspect this and make sure everything was lined up properly. This pleat, for example, wasn't lined up well and wasn't going to leave enough seam allowance in that area, so I unpicked a small section and adjusted. Thank you. 
When attaching the waistband, I started with the front section so I would be able to pay close attention to all of the pleats and pocket fabric. While sewing, I'm making sure to feel through the fabric layers with my left hand to make sure that I can't feel anything weird going on as the fabric is moving closer to getting under the needle. After a quick surge of the sewn sections to finish the seams, it's time for the elastic. I use the highly scientific method of measuring the slightly stretched elastic on my own body. Here I'm using a typical safety pin method for pulling the elastic through. Pinning the elastic to one side makes sure it doesn't get pulled in as you're feeding the other end through the waistband channel that you just created. Time for a quick try on to make sure the elastic is the right length before sewing. This feels pretty good, so now it's time to sew the sides of the elastic in place and serge the waistband edges to finish everything off. I decided I wanted to top stitch the waistband so it would look just a little bit neater. Getting all of the gathers spaced out turned to be a bit of a pain, but I got there eventually. I put pins every few inches to make sure that the gathers would stay relatively evenly spaced as I sewed. Here, I'm stretching the elastic as I'm top stitching between the pins. I'm being really careful not to pull the fabric through my machine at all, but just stretch the elastic and let the machine's feed dogs move it through at the correct pace. I sewed a double line of top stitching, so the waistband is divided lengthwise in approximately thirds. Elastic waists really aren't the most beautiful things in the world, but what are you gonna do? Time for another try on to make sure everything still feels good. I like where the waist is hitting. It doesn't feel too high or too low, and the pockets are in a good place too. I'm not 100% sure I cut these pieces perfectly on grain, so I decided to let these hang for a while before hemming them. If fabric is cut on the bias, even by extant, it will generally stretch out a bit if it's allowed to hang, so I'll come back to this in a few days. Maybe a little bit more than a few days later, it's time for another try on to see how much I need to hem these. I want to make sure they won't drag on the ground, but other than that I'm not feeling too picky about the length. I'll likely wear these with flats only, so I'm trying them on with the flattest shoes I have to make sure the length is okay. With this pattern, since the legs are so wide, I find it a bit tricky to get both legs cut to the same length, especially since obviously my original pieces did not line up well here. I ended up cutting a bit off one leg and then folding both legs together and using the first cut as a guide for the second leg. I'm planning to do a rolled hem on the serger, which won't take up a lot of fabric, so I don't need to worry about leaving hem allowance at the bottom here, really. One final try on to double check the length, and I think this looks pretty good. For the rolled hem, I only need three threads in my serger and one needle as opposed to the usual two. The right needle thread and the upper looper thread, the middle two on my machine, are the threads that will show on the right side, so I replace the black serger thread for those two with a navy. The lower looper thread will only be visible on the wrong side, so I left the black thread there. Here, I'm removing the left needle and also the stitch finger, which will enable the machine to form the rolled hem properly. I'll include a link to a good tutorial about this down below. After threading the machine, I make sure that my stitch settings are all set to R to start, and that I have the blade engaged. I can always make adjustments to this after I test on some scrap fabric. Turning the tension up on the lower looper is what helps pull the rolled hem around the edge of the fabric, so I'm just bumping that up a bit. I tested on a single layer of scrap fabric, and I'm happy with the way this looks, so now it's time to actually hem the pants. I'm letting the blade cut off just a bit of the bottom hem to get a smoother edge. For the reveal, here are a few different ways I'm planning to wear these. The first outfit is totally casual with a crop top and sneakers. This is something I'd totally wear for tooling around the house or hanging out with friends.
This second outfit is a way that I might wear these pants to work if I had to go into the office ever again with a half tucked drapey blouse and some of my favorite shoes. I like that this style hides the elastic waist a little bit. The third outfit is my current look around the house, freezing my butt off so I'm layering all of the knits. One thing I really like about this look is that it's really easy to fit long underwear under these pants and not feel like a stuffed sausage. This might not be the most flattering look ever, but it is definitely practical for my life right now. And this fourth look is my favorite. I will absolutely be wearing this outfit throughout the summer when I need to be somewhat clothed, but I don't want to actually feel any clothes touching my body. I love that there's so much room in the hips of these, so the fit there just isn't going to be an issue no matter what my body's doing. So that's my video on the elastic back and slash pocket hacks of the Winslow culottes pattern. I can't recommend this pattern highly enough and I can see myself making a few more pairs with this elastic waist hack especially. Maybe a short pair for the summer? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye